Classroom of the Elite starts off with a boy named Kiyotaka Ainokoji coming to his first day of school, but it's a school which will help him live a normal teenager life. After being locked in a room full of white, spending every day developing into an elite among Japan, this is all he could ask for, as being such a curious person. Which is stated in Volume 7 where Ainokoji has a talk with his dad about why Ainokoji would leave the white room in the first place. This is because there were things the White Room simply couldn't teach Kiyotaka, as his father had cut what he had deemed unnecessary in the education curriculum. The normal teenager's life goal actually represents freedom, or being free without using his true abilities, as being free from the White Room isn't really true, as he'll have to return after the three years of his education. Kiyotaka actually states about being free from the White Room in Volume 1 after he talks about the peculiar people in his class. He talks about how he wanted to be free like a bird, from being languished, or rotting in a cage. The first hint of the White Room 2. Here in Volume 1, we also get introduced to Kyo's way of narrating by being a bit unreliable. Since we have pre-established information on Kyotaka after seeing what he can do, it's easy to see that what he is saying is not true at this point. But this is only true if you skip past his way of talking, like using might slash maybe, if, and more probable terms. So from here, you can see him in his fake facade, stating things that can happen to him and his way of narrating continues basically throughout the novel, not just with his false facade. So you can see this happens with those conditional terms, but this depends on what translation you read, but it's important to understand this when seeing what Ayanokoji is actually thinking. Now from here we see Ayanokoji facial expressions change in the light novel illustrations, but anime only, this is a huge shock, it surprises people, and makes people ask why Horikita said he has a face of a doll, with his face never changing. This is because the illustrations are to show how he's expressing himself in his monologues, even though, on the outside, he probably isn't phased. I only say this because Ainokoji being super shocked with the Kushida grabbing him to dodge her wouldn't be crazy when he obviously is fast enough to stop this. It's a projection on how he thinks he reacts, though I'm referring to the false persona mainly here. While on the bus, Ainokoji has his famous equality talk. This is a theme in the Classroom Elite series and Ainokoji's character, as he has been the top dog of the White Room and had knowledge that far exceeds the amount learnt in a lifetime. The interest in equality is simply what is a bottom feeder, as Kiyotaka's dad likes to call it, to a White Roomer or an inferior, and a superior to put it simply. By also not using his White Room abilities, he's also being a fool which his father had told him in the White Room. His core reason of just not going all out to go against his father. Do you have the ability to do something and don't use it properly is a thing only a fool would do. Now here we have the way he beats his father. Though being beaten himself, a white room student being beaten by a bottom feeder, is something that would destroy everything his father thinks and his philosophy. But then we have Aina Koji's philosophy, which is a philosophy built inside of him for many years of his life. The actual ideologies and the white room planted within him, being a winner and nothing else. All people are tools, doing anything to get to your goals. Since Ainokoji's philosophy is one that has been built since he was young to when he escaped, he is stuck with a particular idea. It's also his nature too, because he was brought up there. He can have all the development, everything including like three years of general social development, and he still can't change. And this is why Ainokoji generally can't change his philosophy, as it's something that can't be changed by just raw social contact or actual development. So if he can't change, can he truly be a better person? Can he defeat his father? If proven wrong, then his philosophy can change. This is where Ainokoji being defeated is a core part of the character. As if he is defeated, not only does his father lose, but he wins losing the general ideals of his father slash the white room. So with a subconscious wish to be beaten, his competitive nature will also contradict this by wanting to win. So when versing someone that will bury him, he will still go for the win against the person trying to defeat him. So he has to make people grow and witness that growth, and then hopefully, be beaten. To keep from this philosophy, he has a facade, and with this facade he has this normal teenager personality, and acts with all the anime tropes, and has a goal of a peaceful life, and one that avoids trouble. With this facade, he is able to avoid the influence of his actual philosophy. This occurs in the two and nearly three volumes where Ainokoji acts in the way I just discussed. So from here, he goes along with his school life, he helps people, as that is what a normal person would do, and is also trying to develop himself socially. He grows socially, but also still gets stopped by his white room mindset in volume 2. He gets more involved than usual. At the end where Ainokoji and Harukita have their conversation, 
Ayanokoji thinks about if Chabashiro knows of his past, and continues to think about the classes and analyzes everything. Here Ayanokoji's white room personality is on, and when he thinks about the options to class D becoming class A, the reason Ayanokoji starts to get annoyed at himself for thinking this way is his white room mindset playing in again. Someone who wants to win and dominate, but to avoid this, he does that facade, but yet here he gets involved. Remember, this is something he wants to prove wrong because of his father. His father is something he doesn't like. His white room self is an image of his father. Therefore, it's hatred for his white room self. He felt disgusted with himself as his white room mindset had been on here. And then he went back into the school persona and he saw how he was acting. You'll notice this white room mindset always switches on when he is in a competitive situation or a dangerous situation. An analysis on the people around him in volume 2 is due to the war declaration from Ryun and Horikita probing him for more information, as well as him probably thinking if Chabashira really knew of his past. This clash of his competitive nature and his subconscious desire continues on through the light novel, and you'll see this from here on. Speaking of Chabashira, we now see a desperate Chabashira say wanting to get to class A, and realizing that Ayanokoji is someone special, which has been built up for two volumes. Here she threatens him by talking about expelling him from the school if he doesn't try to get to class A. Here Ayanokoji is put into danger and puts on his white room personality, a defense mechanism. This white room personality isn't only what I spoke of before, it's also a personality that goes to any extent to protect himself, a defense mechanism Ayanokoji has. It's scary to be a loser, and he knows how it feels as he stated in volume 7 in the fight with Ryun. I know how miserable and terrifying it feels to be a loser. I've seen people break down in front of my eyes countless times. But after a while, it stopped being fear. I just felt cold, because I realized that no matter how much suffering and despair others go through, I myself will never have to experience the same. As long as I possess the means to protect myself, all is fine. As long as I'm safe, that means I'm the victor. Ayanokoji in this volume goes for the win, and this is where we get an actual look at Ayanokoji's white room defense mechanism. Staring into the darkness and looking down at Horikita, monologuing about the values of his philosophy. Ayanokoji knows what it's like to be a loser, so he won't let himself lose. Ayanokoji now has to win and try and get his class to class A, while trying because of this threat. So now he's been put here, he's going to act like that person in the white room who also went through the same situation. In volume 4, Ayanokoji still is in his white room mindset due to the blackmail still carrying on till volume 7. In volume 4, we have Ayanokoji make a bond in a very warped way. In this volume, we find his preconception of Kei was more different than he thought, and we thought. She puts on a persona, being a guru type girl, but yet is a fearful bullied victim. A comparison to Ayanokoji, who like I've already stated, also had to adapt to the white room. Before that though, he would always cry. This is why when Ayanokoji confronts her in the famous scene, he says people who carry darkness within are attracted to one another, referring to him. So now Ayanokoji will protect her because of the similarities between them, and he gets someone to use for his plans, and a vast influence in their class. Remember, this is because of him wanting to protect himself from getting expelled. That's why he wants to use her. Now from here, about Kiyotaka's character comes down to their relationship with understanding the difference between his white room mindset. When volume 7 comes around, we have Chabashiro's blackmail being undone, by confirming that Ayanokoji's father hasn't contacted the school for him to be expelled yet. Her leverage was gone, therefore Ayanokoji had no reason to try and go to class A anymore. Helping the class to get there was not considered anymore. Yet, here he saves K, someone that should be considered a tool. And that's it, their connection should be gone, except for their protection deal. Ayanokoji reveals his identity and strength to Ryuin for the connection he formed. He saves his connection. Sadly, due to multiple mistranslations, Kiyotaka gets the rep of being an emotionless cold dude who shows no emotions and things like that because of him saying, I felt no emotions and definitely not fear, which is actually mistranslated as him saying, there should be no emotions seeping out. That's very different. And then the illustration shows Kiyotaka with an expression of anger punching Ryuin, which really makes this moment better. These mistranslations are common within the volumes, so be careful when looking at him, otherwise you may get the wrong idea. Subscribe for more content.